Welcome to the, the Low Carb, Carb Athlete, Athlete Podcast, Podcast, where we focus on discussing topics to help you burn fat, optimize health, and improve performance in life and sports. Transform the whole you from the inside out with the holistic method. Let's dive in. Here's your host, Debbie Potts. Hey guys, it's Debbie, and have you used a CGM before? CGM is Continuous Glucose Monitor, and there's different options out there. Ideally, you can get it from your doctor, but they seem to just want to wait until you're type 2 diabetic and not be preventative. I would like us to take ownership of our health and make choices now to prevent having high, low glucose readings and optimize your health from the inside out by testing and not guessing. And that includes a CGM that goes on for 14 days and you can order one via NutriSense. And a CGM is giving you glucose updates with a small device in the back of your arm, 24 seven. Totally easy, I actually did a video on my YouTube channel, Low Carb Athlete, how to apply this CDM, first time, kind of scared, but it doesn't hurt. But it gives you real-time glucose readings. Glucose response to meals, you'll learn about what foods are reactive to you, and that could be a healthy food that you think is great, but it could raise your glucose. Simple things as stevia, for me, raise my glucose. Chewing gum, raise my glucose. Stress, when I'm driving a car and there's traffic, raises my glucose. Every stress response is a glucose response. So learn how to manage your stress. Learn, learn how to pick right foods for you, unless you can you know, do other lab testing and figure out vibrant wellness food zoomers, but it's kind of expensive for people. So if you can wear a CGM, it's a great way to learn about stress, food, exercise, stacking movement with your nutrition, figure out how to balance your blood sugar. So we want to learn more about how to exercise and eat or not eat. And morning cortisol, does it raise your glucose? If there's hidden stressors at nighttime, does your glucose go up higher while you're sleeping? So it gives us lots of clues that we can put in our investigation when we are working on your personalized fueling training and performance program to improve fat loss, performance and longevity. So head to NutriSense website, NutriSense.io, how it works. You can learn more about your habits, your routines, your relationship to food, a little bit more great app to use, and it can sync on to different programs. So you can put it all together. So if you want to get started with your journey in NutriSense, I suggest this to all my clients. Use at least 30 days so you can do a 30-day, 90-day different programs, but you can pick which one you want. You get the sensor in the mail, put it on, last for 14 days, sync it to the nap, and get your readings on there. And then if you're doing my VIP coaching program, I'm working with you to correlate this data together. So begin your health optimization journey with NutriSense, and you can save on your order with our code, as usual, low carb athlete. So no carbs is not our goal, it's carb timing and using NutriSense, can, you can help figure out your nutrient dense whole food plan and when to adjust your macros based on your exercise intensity duration based on your life stressors and learn more. So it's nice to have this data. So test and not guess with NutriSense. Let me know how you like it. Hey, it's Debbie Potts, and I'm going to do a little overview of how chronic stress impacts the whole you, as we are on my 10-year anniversary of my adrenal exhaustion, air quotes, and how I went from top age group athlete in triathlons, Ironman distance, usually it was my favorite, long distance events as cycling and marathons, trail running. I haven't been able to do any of that since I tried 2015 racing again, but since 2013, I had everything kind of changed. And I like to share my story because this is why I do what I do, why I became last 10 years, a Czech holistic lifestyle coach, why I became a nutritional therapy practitioner, 
and why I became an FDN practitioner, functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner. So I can do functional lab testing and really became a health investigator over the years, helping other endurance athletes similar to myself that are high performers, ambitious, eager to do all the right things. But a lot of times I'm getting clients that are similar to me that were struggling getting the desired results, even though you're trying to do all the right things you hear about carb intake might be too low or too high. How do you know it's the right amount of fat to have? How much fasting should you do? How should you train each day? Are you varying your fasting? Are you varying your nutrients, focusing on more uh, carnivore or keto carnivore or low carb Mediterranean or paleo or whatever? How should you eat? And how much should we do fasting as an athlete And then how much should you do fasting? How much fasting should you do if you are a female athlete? Because we're different than men. So the way women should train versus a male should train is going to differ as well as a female athlete. If you're pre-menopausal to post-menopausal, things will look different as well. So really learning how to tailor everything to the individual, personalizing your fueling training performance plan, focusing on events you're training for this year, races, but also hopefully you're all focusing on your future self and training for life and enjoying life and embracing the aging process, not blaming it and learning how to strive to thrive as we age, not struggle to get through the day. So that's kind of what I've been focusing on, on the podcast and my coaching platform, social media, even though I'm not a like really good at social media every day. I get exhausted social media, but really trying to share my story with you here on the podcast and the why, why is that? So chronic stress, as I said, can impact all of you. And this is what I'm going to be talking about in an upcoming conference on the low carb cruise coming up June, 2023. And really what happened to me, I think I was doing everything too much working out a lot, training for races, racing all year long, wasn't just the only thing I was doing. I was also running my own business. I was doing really low, low carb, high fat, doing that before we knew it was keto and really had my life change because my health changed. So about me, you can uh, learn all about me on the podcast. I try to be authentic and just be real and share my struggles. But I think what's changed over the years is doing 25 years in the fitness industry. I originally started as a personal trainer and fitness instructor and over the years, and that started, gosh, 25 years ago out of college. I, in college, I actually ran fitness centers and became ACSM certified in college to do fitness testing and studied all that back in college. And then out of college, I was fitness program coordinator at the YMCA and then started at the Bellevue club in Bellevue, Washington as fitness instructor and then assistant fitness instructor and led all spin classes and Pilates. And I taught yoga and led fit life classes and did metabolic efficiency testing. And so over the years, I continue to always learn and grow because it's, there's always more to learn and it's never ending. So Ben Greenfield started a superhuman coach program back in, I think, 2010, 2015, nutritional therapy practitioner, as I said, and Czech holistic lifestyle coach, USA triathlon coach. I remember doing in 2009 because that's where I met Bob Sebahor and really learned he what he was talking about was what I was thinking about, you know, no need to eat so much sugar and you don't need to eat every hour and fuel to burn fat. And I probably took that to extreme and didn't eat anything. That's another story. Keon became a Keon coach. 2019, Ben Greenfield switched to superhuman coach to Keon program and my coach contract work for him now, uh, DNA fit coach, and I'm studying for wild health coaching certification coming up soon. FDN practitioner, well, that's old. Um, and it was competitive age group athlete and all that. So what now I do is help people learn how to burn fat, really say that, but it's being metabolic flexibility. You should be able to burn fat and you should be able to burn carbohydrates. Carbohydrates are your backup fuel source. We want to improve health, longevity, and improve performance. 
So I call it the holistic method where I'm coaching people from the inside out, working on nutrition exercise as I always did for gosh, 25 plus years being in this industry as a personal trainer, I couldn't help people just training them twice a week, once a week with just 30 minutes to an hour personal training and really got into nutrition back in college, but found it was really important to look at nutrition, what clients were eating when they're eating, but also how they're sleeping, how they were moving throughout the day. What were you doing the rest of the time when I wasn't giving you a 30 minute personal training session or originally we still always do 45 minutes. So the holistic method is training the whole person and really focusing on the, the stress management and gut health and proper digestion and hydration throughout the day. So I ask clients, what are you struggling with? What are your areas of opportunity? What are you trying to do? And what do you feel like you, you've tried and it's not working? So remember the kind of definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over again, expecting different results. So if you, I kind of like to look at what are you doing now and what can we tweak? What can we adjust and course correct? Do you experience chronic fatigue? Do you feel burned out, broken from the inside out as I had happened 10 years ago? I gained 30 pounds in a few months. I went from best shape of my life in Ironman Hawaii doing that in 2012, that December, I remember I did North Face 50K, still felt really good. Uh, and then January 2013, I remember doing Carlsbad Marathon and wasn't as fast as I usually was. And so started to get little red flags there I didn't pay attention to. And then February, I had a 50K trail run in Bellingham, the, what's it? That's a big one. It was called something, but I know the, uh, there's some really steep hills in there, but that was another big clue. My heart rate was super high and I was struggling to finish. So I was looking at, you know, what are those red flags? What have you been doing that's not working? Are you going from lean and strong? So I was, you know, in that March 2013, I started feeling tired and having naps in the afternoon and the middle of the night, I could not sleep at all. That 2 a.m. wake up call is often that high cortisol when it's supposed to be low and your melatonin cortisol rhythms all off and really looking at what's going on with your liver and is our parasites, pathogens at nighttime, be more active at 2 a.m. to 3 a.m. Chinese medicine, the Chinese clock, looking at what's going on. So we want to look at how do you feel? Are you struggling to lose weight? You're trying keto. You're trying low carb. You're trying nutrient timing. You're trying timing of fasting. And when you're eating, not eating, really looking at what's going on. Are you prioritizing sleep? How are you starting the day? Are you getting some earth and grounding? Are you getting out morning sunshine? Are you taking time out to breathe and unplug and relax? So it's really looking at what are your area opportunities? What are your struggles? But what are your goals? What is being healthy? What is eating healthy? I always ask people when they say they're eating healthy, I'm like, well, what does that mean? <laughs> you know, ideally we want to look at where you are and meet you where you are at. So if you have unexplained weight gain, even you're doing low carb, is your blood sugar high? Stress, remember, raises blood sugar. How is your sleep wake cycles? And you might wonder what's wrong with me. You think this is your new normal and it's not. You can figure out what is going on if we do a full investigation, external stressors, and these hidden internal sources of stress as it happened to me. The struggle is real. Sometimes you just need to help, get some help, get a coach, get a practitioner that can work with you, identifying those hidden internal sources of chronic stress that are contributing to dysfunction and balance in your body, and then figure out how to restore balance, restore homeostasis in your body as your body's own innate intelligence sometimes just needs a few ingredients and a reset reboot to get it to function at optimal level. So hidden stressors stand for hormone dysfunction, immune dysfunction, digestion, detoxification, energy, and nervous systems. They all can come awry. So as I said, I gained 30 pounds in three months. I felt like I was the only one struggling and I felt like everyone was looking at me going from lean, strong, elite age group athlete to eating bomb bombs on the sofa and not doing anything. I was embarrassed. I was 
feeling insecure, self-esteem goes down. You feel like everyone's looking at you like this fat slob where I didn't change my nutrition. I was eating real food. I was eating low carb, but was I eating too little calories? Was I eating too much fat and not enough carbohydrates for how much I was exercising? You know, all that we know now, I wish I knew then because I probably didn't have to get through, you know, it took me five plus years to get better. So what my mission is now, my purpose is to help you avoid going through what I went through. So breaking down and burning out from a cellular level is what happened. I wanted to get fixed. I wanted the instant results and couldn't just do that with supplements. I had to work on the whole me and that included moving from Seattle to North San Diego in 2020. So what, as an FDM practitioner, Reed Davis is the founder and he quote, he said, symptoms may be far removed from the casual factors or stressors found upstream metabolic chaos. So looking at the chronic stress response, if we have too much going on externally, internally accumulates and refills that beaker of stress. But I, I had to figure out what was my background. Where did this come from when I got my so-called adrenal exhaustion? So I wrote a book called Life is Not a Race. It is a journey. It's on Amazon. Learn how to take care of the whole you from the inside out. I probably should change that subtitle because it's really not. It's just sharing my story to help you figure out, oh, I get that. Or that happened to me. So what I've learned over the years, more is not better. Too much of anything is toxic. Too little of anything leads to deficiencies. Genetics, I, I don't think I can tolerate stress as much as other people. So I know other friends that still do Ironman every year. I did 15 Ironmans and multiple times two a year Ironmans because you qualify for Ironman Hawaii by doing another Ironman. So then you're doing a race in say June or August. And I did Ironman Hawaii in October many times. And then I would do other races in between to help get ready for the big races. And so you have your A race, B race, and C race. And then off season, you do marathons for fun. (laughs) So I was doing too much of everything, but also I was running my own business, huge overhead rent, paying for property rental space in downtown Bellevue, Washington, very expensive, went up every January. And when I opened my fitness studio, it was easier to run a all-in-one fitness studio. And then everybody else started opening up fitness boutique studios and Orange Theory and Soul Cycle and all that came out. So I used to do competitive racing. Here's some pictures. If you're watching the slides on the YouTube channel, like I come down to, you'll hear me say all the time, the Goldilocks effect, not too much, not too little, just that right amount of exercise, the right amount of hot, cold therapy, the right amount of lower carbohydrates, the right amount of macros, the right amount of sleep, everything comes to personalizing what works best for you. So yes, I used to race actually this picture here at one second place, actually won some money, my only time. I didn't even know I had a picture of that, but that's so long ago. Hanu, half Iron Man. I love Kona still because I have a lot of good memories from there. I feel like it's my magic healing place. So what I used to do, wake up 3.45 in the morning. I go get to my fitness studio. I had clients coming in at 5, 5.15 a.m. I would make bulletproof coffee to survive the day. I check emails, get organized at, at like 4.30 in the morning. It was scary coming to a fitness studio in that dark hour. So I'd locked myself in there to keep the lights low and lock the door for sure. So I'd have clients all morning until about 1145, ran down the street or drove to the Bellevue Club, my club forever that I worked at and a member of to do master swim. And then I would go back to work or maybe I would go for a bike ride at home. And then I'd work on the computer and then I have clients in the afternoon some days or evenings, but I'd work till seven o'clock at night, maybe do some yoga. I get home around seven 30 and bed at nine repeat. And my food choices, I would use just bulletproof coffee, which is fat, butter from fat, from butter, butter, my coffee and MCT oil and collagen. I think it was just coffee and stick of butter. I would just live off of that all morning and then maybe eat in the late afternoon or just grab a bar I was eating low carb, high fat, 
I was running metabolic efficiency tests on people, but also myself. And I was very good at burning fat at high heart rates. So my REI, RER, where percentage of fat to carbs was very good. It was very efficient. I was metabolically flexible. So I had good fat and carb metabolism. So I could do a lot of fasted workouts, probably did too many of them knowing what I know now. Uh, yeah. So I did low carb and Ironmans and marathons. I was doing them low carb back 10, 15 years ago. So I was also teaching classes and moving all day. So I was probably getting a little bit too much of everything, eating too little, not getting enough protein back then. I was, you know, doing swim, bike, run yoga. I was on a Mark Allen elite team for a long time, training, biking, swim, bike, and run four days a week each. Plus I was doing yoga. I was teaching classes and I was doing uh, demos all the time, teaching my circuit training at my studio. So over the time I kind of changed, trying to wake up my mornings a little later. And I, I do wake up early. I'm an early morning person. I like to go to the gym and work out or go running or outside in the mornings. I work on clients. Now I go to master swim, which is an outdoor pool in Solana beach. And I eat lunch often at two or three in the afternoon, work again till five. I don't get as much movement now on this new job being online and not working a fitness studio, but now I'm coaching clients and researching and doing computer work. So putting my blue blockers on a lot, daytime glasses to block this light and make intentional time to get out and just walk up our yard is upstairs up on a hill. So I get little walkabouts and really be more intuitive that I'm not fasting so much as I used to. I found that my, my thyroid panel I just did is really low. My cortisol levels are really low still. So I, I'm trying to take some supplements as DHA and some adaptogens and getting my coffee, but really prioritizing sleep. I'm not training cl clients in person as much. So I'm not working out all day as I used to, which is good and bad. I feel like I'm sitting too much, but I'm trying to be more what Brock and I were just talking about being intuitive, but listen to my body. If I'm hungry, don't wait to break that fast till 11 AM. I used to not eat until it was a certain time rather than listening to my body is hungry, especially when I exercise first thing in the morning, like I lifted weights and I did some jump rope intervals. And then we went for a beach run for 45 minutes today and came home and I made an effort to put some, um, protein and creatine in my water and collagen and my coffee and some heavy cream because I haven't eaten yet and I'm busy. So I'm trying to make sure I give my body some fuel to help repair and recovery and fuel up for the next workout. So you have to take a note, go, okay, am I in fight or flight all day? Am I rushing having what some people call the Russian rushing woman syndrome? Dr. Mindy talks about, and I forget the author of the book, but it is, we tend to just be going all day. And I did this myself. I'd get up, you know, at three 34 in the morning and was home going to bed at 9 PM at night. And I wouldn't stop. I was go, 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 go all day. So you have to ask yourself, if you're struggling with losing weight, if you're struggling with optimizing your health, if your performance is struggling, how's your stress? Are you just in parasympathetic state and then sympathetic state? Are you just stuck in sympathetic overdrive? So there's sympathetic dominance you can identify with the HRV test measuring your LF to HF scores. You can listen to previous podcasts we did on that. So what is a chronic stress cascade? So distress... <laughs> Reed Davis taught us this in our FDM program. Distress of any kind contributes to loss of homeostasis, dysfunction, dis-ease. And eventually we call this all leads to metabolic chaos, this, all this imbalances. And if you don't stop and reset, reboot, identify these imbalances, if you left them untreated, that probably I did without knowing it until 2013 when I was feeling lethargic and had to have naps and lost muscle and gained fat weight suddenly wasn't suddenly it probably was happening for years before. So if it's left untreated, more symptoms will appear downstream. So I probably had symptoms, but I wasn't paying attention to them because I was this driven, ambitious overachiever. The old me was actually a lot more serious. And now I'm a little more flexible and chill, but I was really 
focused and on my training and try to follow my training schedule and everything to a T and had to have everything right. Now, how did that serve me? Not so great because I had to do a lot of adjustments and course corrections. So only treating symptoms leads to more dysfunction. So go back, metabolic chaos. If left untreated, more symptoms appear downstream. Only treating symptoms leads to more dysfunction. Symptoms may be far removed from the stressors found upstream. And that's from Reed Davis of our FDN practitioner program. Now, a nutritional therapy practitioner program, we also start working north to south. So if you have all these symptoms, I give people a NutriQ assessment and look at all your signs and symptoms, correlate that to what organ function that might be, if it's blood sugar, mineral balance, central fatty acid deficiency, liver congestion, poor digestion, dysbiosis, gut health, thyroid, hormone imbalance, whatever. We always start north. How are you eating when you're eating? Why? What? Where? And work on taking time out to reset, reboot. So just stop, pause and reset three breaths before you eat. When you're driving your car and someone's slow be in front of you. So really looking at this chart, if we zoom in the parasympathetic to sympathetic. So if you look at what goes on, your pupils, your, I can't read what's that other thing. I'm going to put my glasses on. So you can look at this chart. Maybe you need glasses on like myself, your actions that are sympathetic. And then what's your parasympathetic. So you can see all the actions of your gallbladder in sympathetic versus parasympathetic, your intestines, your bladder, everything versus the other. Whoops. So you want to look at getting help, get your insurance to cover things, right? Well, I have this happen all the time with clients, their doctors, get their labs to them. They don't even do a full comprehensive panel anymore, but insurance only covers so much. So we have to go to Alta labs or DHLE labs to order additional ones. The doctors insurance companies won't do, but then all your results, (coughs) they say you're normal. Do you look at those numbers? The ranges are huge. So I take people's blood chemistry panel, put it in a narrow range. And then if that's high or low than our functional ranges, what is that a clue to, for example, cholesterol doesn't mean you need statin drugs. If it's very elevated, it's more a clue that we need to look at how's your liver health. How's your thyroid panel? How is your stomach acidity, whatever it might be. So we want to look at metabolic chaos. What is that related to? So we're looking at blood chemistry, but then we want to look at your Dutch test for your hormone panel, your dried urine test. We want to look at your GI test. So Aspects of metabolic chaos on this video screen, you can watch on the YouTube channel. We create this imbalance of DHA and cortisol. We create this, these weak links imbalances, but they're going to impact all this mixed function, detox capacity, your fat and protein metabolism, your thyroid function, your motility issues, brain fog, cloudy thinking, your sleep, your enzyme from your pancreas might not be released. Your bone turner of a connective tissue turnover, muscle integrity, your cells, your carb metabolism, glucose homeostasis. So it really impacts everything from chronic stress is what we want to work on. So let me shrink this back down, but that's from our FDN program. Whoops. How do I switch this now? So if we go to chronic stress versus acute stress, we all hear about hormetic stressors. So acute stress is good for you. But if you do that positive stressor, just a little bit on, take it off, on, off, on, off stress, that's beneficial. But what happens if that on, off becomes on all the time or longer time and you don't turn it off that I always think of it as a leaky faucet. So we want to look at what is the Goldilocks effect for your stressors. So lifting weights, the sauna, the cold plunge, are you doing it too much? So we want to look at this optimum stress level on this chart too much, start to get that fatigue. And then you have that bell curve exhaustion. I don't stop turning off that stress. I keep going. I keep going. 
too much stress overload. And then I don't change my ways. I don't change my lifestyle habits. And then I get to burnout, breakdown, anxiety, panic, anger. Here's where you get the unexplained weight gain, waking up middle of the night. You're stressed out all the time. You can't calm down. You're depressed and you're anxious and you just don't have energy to do anything. And you have this brain fog. It just accumulates. So we want to have not too little stress. You don't want to be too parasympathetic, too laid back, but just that optimum level right here. So too much we want to watch out for. And I think this is what I see more and more with people, especially my athletes. So there's you stress. Is that cute stress? A form of stress having beneficial effect on health, motivation, and performance. And there's distress, a type of stress where we're referring to when we say stress, the negative implication of stress. So good stress. So things that might be bad in high amounts can be good in low amounts. So calorie restriction, cold temperature, heat shock, radiation, germs, physical stress, exercise, all those can be good, just a little bit. Plant toxins, same thing. What are some physical symptoms of stress? Aches and pains, chest pain, your heart's racing, exhaustion, trouble sleeping, headaches, dizziness, shaking, high blood pressure, libido, immune system, you're getting sick all the time. You have stomach issues, digestive problems because stress is on, digestion is off. Stress is on, your immune system is down. Stress is on, your blood sugar levels go up. It has nothing to do with what you're eating. You could be eating good, healthy, low-carb foods, but if you're stressed out, my blood sugar was still raising, rising up and I had insulin resistance. I gained 30 pounds without changing what I ate. Remember, it wasn't to do with my nutrient macros. So here's from Rupa Health, wired but tired. This isn't a normal part of aging. Here's an, a few bits of their article. Feeling wired and tired, the weight gain, temperature fluctuations, sleep disturbances, decreased immune function, stress, chronic stress. So adrenal fatigue is, we're supposed to say HPA axis dysfunction, but there are different levels of that. There's HPA axis progression. So you might relate to this, feeling wired and tired. You wake up exhausted, need coffee, caffeine to keep you awake during the day. Your energy level is great. And then the afternoon hits and you have a crash. You need to get a nap or to keep going, you have more coffee or something stimulants to get that second wind before going to bed. And then you can't wind down. You're tired, but wired. You can't sleep through the night. You wake up and you're wide awake and then the, you continue and you're in that hamster wheel or, and you have waking like me. I had all of it. So cortisol levels rise during stress to assist in fight or flight functions. If you have chronic stress or regular sleep schedules, your adrenals can take a beating and overproduce cortisol. Over time, high levels of continuous cortisol have been shown to increase belly fat and appetite as you more cortisol receptors on those fat cells. Temperature fluctuations. Body temperature fluctuates during time of stress and relaxation. You can see that with your aura ring or your whoop. Sleep disturbances. Cortisol helps regulate sleep patterns and helps the body cope with everyday stress. Normal cortisol levels rise in the early morning hours and are highest about 7 a.m. They should drop low in the evening and during your early sleep. But if you're in constant state of stress or disrupted sleep schedule, your adrenals can produce too much cortisol causing disturbances in your sleep patterns. That's why I like to do the Dutch test because you'll see the rhythm cortisol to melatonin over a 24 hour, somewhat 24 hour time period. If you get your hormones tested as cortisol from your doctor, say at 9 a.m., that's just what's in your blood levels of your hormones at that time of day, not all day long. So you want to get a 24 hour panel. When your stress immune system's ability to fight off infections is reduced, too much cortisol pumping through your body creates systemic inflammation and an overworked immune system. This decreases the body's lymphocytes, the white blood cell count, blood cell counts. Ugh, I'm saying that wrong. White blood cells that help fight off infection. They lower your lymphocyte level. The more risk you are for viruses, including the common cold and core cold source. A lot of clients come to me and I look at their blood chemistry panel. I look at their signs and symptoms and they get sick all the time. They keep getting infections. They keep having 
issues with maybe different viruses going on, colds, allergies. You can't fight them off because your immune system is dampened. Too much cortisol pumping through the body, remember, creates systemic inflammation and overworked immune system. So stress can lead to emotional and mental symptoms. As I said, that anxiety, irritability, depression, panic attacks, sadness, but you might have issues with other behaviors that I see with people, alcohol, drinking too much. Are you drinking every night? Are you drinking once or twice a week and have two drinks maximum? That's okay. But if you're drinking one or more drink every night, I have to ask people, is that really necessary? Why are you using that? Is it coping method? Is it just a habit? Gambling. There's different addictions. I find a lot of athletes are addicted to exercise. They come from an addictive background. They're turning to exercise to help something that they're, they're, what are you running to? What are you running from question? But maybe they had eating addictions. They had sugar addictions. Maybe they had alcohol and drug addiction, shopping, internet, smoking, drugs. So there's a lot of addictive behaviors, but that can be related to chronic stress. You're trying to manage it. So what happens to the body during stress? I won't go into this. This is all in the ebook. I'm putting this slide presentation into but how cortisol affects adrenal fatigue from Rupa Health. The test did not guess with the Dutch test. Uh, cortisol rhythm, what we want to look at, what's the optimal amount of cortisol. And you'll see that blood sugar, that Dawn, Dawn Patrol, Dawn Patrol. That's what we call running in the morning at the beach, but your dawn, the morning awakenings response cortisol should be higher. So your blood glucose will be higher upon waking because it's trying to wake you up and get you going versus at nighttime trying to wind down. So there's signs and symptoms of high cortisol listed on my slides in the ebook. And we want to look at that. Where are we on the HPA axis progression? And then what are some signs and symptoms of low cortisol? Perhaps you were in this acute phase where your cortisol is higher. So you look at this cortisol sum, you're high, but then if it starts to be lower than optimal, you're in compensatory phase and then gets to be really low. Well, that's that exhaustion phase where I was. Burn out, breakdown of your body systems, mitochondria function. Your body gets into a little bit of everything metabolic chaos. So low metabolized, low free cortisol. So we look at different patterns and see that HP axis dysfunction. So this is all in my new ebook, cortisol, what it does, HPA axis dysfunction, what we're looking at, the cortisol rhythm and how cortisol is related or the adrenal function is also going to impact thyroid and ovaries. So the HPA access function also relates to HP thyroid, HP gonads, or ovaries. So high cortisol symptoms, low cortisol symptoms, we can see all that. So check that out on debbiepotts.net. Go to my free resources and you'll find this ebook. So all that, but it continues on many, many slides of what to do diet and lifestyle habits. If you have high cortisol or low cortisol, it's going to be different and how we work on that as a practitioner. So it just gives you some ideas, some clues, getting an HTMA test, upgraded formulas. We talked to them about doing hair tissue, mineral analysis, doing the Dutch test that gives you information, but chronic stress impacts gut health. So I talk about that in this ebook, the vagus nerve, chronic stress and inflammation. Talk about that. Chronic stress and cardiovascular disease, depression, irritable bowel disorder, rheumatoid arthritis, pathogens, inflammation, glucose levels, weight gain, stress and high cortisol with weight gain, testing and not guessing with your NutriSense or Keto Mojo, looking at insulin resistance. How is cortisol and insulin connected? Testing insulin resistance, insulin, you have to ask your doctor or they usually don't seem to do it, but you can get for $20 on my Ulta Labs link. But really looking at all this information is just too much to put in a seminar. But the what I found interesting years ago is that cell danger response and how stress can neg negatively affect your mitochondria as 
you can learn more about what the cell danger response is and supplements, mitochondria help. What is cell danger response? What do we do? Thyroid. How's the thyroid and cortisol connected? So I talked about that hormones goes on and on and on, and then talk about solutions. Okay. Do you have, how do you get the HP axis to be functioning correctly and not have dysfunction? So going back to the metabolic chaos, looking at strategy, stress management, chronic fatigue, how you can reduce stress, improve thyroid function, you know, how to improve your overall health, balancing your blood sugar, healing your gut, identify food intolerances, chronic infections. So getting the GI, a stool test or Genova diagnostics, environmental toxins, do heavy metal test, HTMA tests, sleep cycle, tracking your sleep using even the aura or whoop prioritizing sleep is really important exercising the right amount. So doing a metabolic assessment on a treadmill or a bike and figure out what your true heart rate zones are doing your FTP test on a bike and really getting the right amount of exercise that strength training, the HIIT training and the zone two aerobic training, but figuring out how much you should spend in each category as well as each zone and what amount works best for you each week. And that's going to vary from women too, if we match it with your hormone cycle. Are you taking adaptogens, ashwagandha, rhodiola, you know, taking lion's mane, reishi mushroom? Why should you take ashwagandha or not? So really looking at, you know, what is the right supplement for you is not listening to a podcast as this or social media, but testing with functional labs and get a whole assessment plan. So you're not just taking whatever you hear about, which most of us do, but actually getting a personalized program based on your test results, what your body needs to restore its health. So if you should take some adaptogen herbs, what should you eat and working on proper nutrition, getting the right magnesium, the vitamin C, zinc, omega-3 fatty acids, making sure you're avoiding inflammatory foods as gluten, dairy, cow dairy for a lot of people, refined sugar, vegetable oil, soy, corn, and eggs can be an issue for people. So what should you do? But also working on your mindset, positive energy, positive minds, positive attitude is my mission, my mantra. And having A monkey mind, if you're all over scattered, just focus on just doing one thing at a time and resetting a little bit more often. So getting your mind right, super essential, disconnecting, unplugging, learning how to slow down, focus, connect, and being in the moment instead of you see people, I saw people at a dinner table the other day and there's three of them and they're all on their phones. What happened to communicating with each other? Go to the gym. Everyone's got their phone connected to their waistline. They're holding it the whole time. They're breaks between workout and they're not chatting with people. They're just listening and playing on their phone. So being more mindful, working on what you can control and identifying what you can't control, but let's, you know, that is the way it is perhaps, but let's work on what you can control. And then making more time to laugh, to play. One of my eight elements of the holistic method is gratitude, is play laughter for a reason, because I was that person that was too serious all the time, too focused and too driven, too ambitious that I wasn't playing and laughing, being silly more. I was a little too hyperadrenic probably. So finding, you know, you need to change your lifestyle and finding variety and everything. Doing nothing is better than being busy doing nothing. So figure out what makes you happy. Find some mantras, train your mind to see the good in everything. Positivity is a choice. The happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts. So maybe that's you, but take ownership, figuring out what is the right schedule, the right way to start the day. What is the right amount of biohacking to do the right supplements to take? Are you doing too much of cold thermogenesis and Genesis too much sauna? Are you too obsessed with all these biohacks? And supplementing that you're stressed out trying to fit it all in in a day. Like I was trying to create the evening stack, but I've realized that if I try to too fit, try to fit too much in in the evening, it stresses me out. So I can't try to do a sunset walk and do sauna and do stretching yoga routine and then write my journal and then read my three pages and more. I can't fit it all in when I sometimes work till six o'clock at night. So 
figuring out what works for you. So that is what I would look at to take care of the whole you and lots of tips in there, but just going back to that Goldilocks effect, what's right amount for you. So head to my website. If you have more questions working on figuring out the holistic method elements and solutions. So blood sugar balance, exercise, the right amount for you, the sleep, what's your chronotype, how to work on your morning routine, your evening routine, stress management, finding that right amount of hormetic stressors, movement and mobility throughout the day, digestion, gut health, hydration with mineral balancing, happiness, gratitude, and play. So head to debbiepotts.net to learn more. And hopefully that can help you figure out where you need to go on your journey to improve the whole you from the inside out and improve the aging process. And we can all live our best life, second half of life. Talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Low Carb Athlete Podcast. If you have any questions, feedback, or topic suggestions, let us know on Facebook or at DebbiePotts.net. You can help us to continue to grow by leaving a review on iTunes. Thanks again, and we'll see you next time.